Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today I want to take a look at card scrapers, how to sharpen them, how to set them up, how do they work, and what should you be looking for. So let's dive in and take a look at these beautiful things. So what exactly is a card scraper? Well basically it's just a thin piece of steel that you can shape a burr on and scrape the wood. A fairly simple device, but with this you can eliminate a lot of sanding and it can give you an amazing finish that just cannot be done with sanding. So let's take a closer look at some of the card scrapers I have. Card scrapers come in all different shapes and sizes and usually you're going to see them in the rectangular shape, but then sometimes you'll see them in these French curves shape and these some of them that you can make for specific designs and specific curvatures. Uh, this one from Bearcat Woodworking is actually designed for chair working, has this little finger point for getting into things. Um, I use this one quite a bit, but most commonly I'm going to be using the rectangular shape. This particular one is one I sell on my website. It has my logo on there and I like the blue color on it. It is made by DFM Toolworks. So I'm going to be using this one mostly, but I'm going to be showing some with the curved plates and having a little bit of fun with all those. So first I want to look at the geometry of this. What actually does the cutting on the edge of one of these card scrapers? So if you imagine the very edge of the card scraper is just this rectangular shape. And so we want to start with, we want to start with very sharp corners here and here. We don't want anything sticking out or anything wavy on it. We just want that rectangular shape. Then what you're going to do is with a burnisher, you're going to push this down. And when you push that surface down, it's going to make this top mushroom out and stick out like this on both sides and you get that little bit of burr sticking out. And then we're going to take the burnisher and slide it at a little bit of an angle, something like that, and that's going to turn this into a hook that's actually a sharp edge here. And that hook is what actually will carve the wood. So as the wood slides around, this becomes the cutting edge and all of these curls then roll up in here. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we have a flat edge here, a flat edge here, and a flat edge on the back. We want to make sure that these corners are nice and sharp and perfectly 90 degrees. The other thing I want to make sure is I want to make sure this top edge isn't wavy. I want to make it straight all the way across. So to do that, I'm going to grab a file, set it on here, and with just a few strokes, I'm going to run it across here, and this will flatten out the top very quickly, give you a nice straight edge. It also will sharpen these corners a little bit and create a bit of a burr. So now I'm flat and straight on the top, but the edges, I have a little bit of burr sticking up either side. And with that little bit of a burr from the file, we can actually get some shavings. But in this case, they're pretty heavy shavings. This is a really strong burr, and it's not going to give me an incredibly smooth surface, but it is going to take off a lot of material quickly. So if I'm trying to get down through tear out, a lot of times I'm just going to use this file. I'll keep it on the bench and every so often, run it on there, and I'm ready to go. And I have a shaving that's really functional, though it's not quite as wispy as I'd want it to be. The next step is to refine these edges. Now this blue film on the top, if I start sharpening it, I'm going to wear it off and I want to keep the look on that. So what I do is I just grab some masking tape and I throw it on there all the way around and that will give me a surface to protect it and it will still allow me to sharpen the edge. So I'm going to add a little bit of this, just going to put it on here in just a couple strokes. Flip it over, just a couple strokes on this side. Then do both of these sides. You want to do all four sides at one time so you have four sides you can work with. That's really all it takes is just a couple strokes and you've gotten rid of that burr. So now I'm going to do the very edge and the very edge. And now I've got a perfectly square edge. I have a square corner here, 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 and here. Now we're ready to grab a burnisher. Now I have this piece of carbide rod, and I'll leave a link to that down below. It's a really simple piece, but this is a really hard piece of steel, so it is much harder than this plate. All you need is a piece of steel that is harder than the plate. So don't use a screwdriver, because most of the time the screwdrivers are actually softer than the plate. But if you have an old knife steel that works well, or if you have a file that has a safe edge, a smooth edge, that can also work very well because files are hardened much harder than the steel. So to actually do the sharpening, I stick the corner into the bench and I hold this up tight and I keep it close to my fingers. So I'm only going to be moving right here, right next to my fingers. So if I wanted to, I could choke up on it with just an inch or so sticking out. And I want to keep this at 90 degrees to the card. I'm just going to do a dozen or so straight scrapes, pushing down into the card. I want to keep this perpendicular to the card.
And what that's doing is it's creating a bit of a mushroom. There's a bit of a curl coming off either side and you can just barely feel it with your fingers as you slide along. Now what I want to do is I want to take this from 90 degrees and I'm going to pivot it just a little way, just like five degrees or so, not much at all. Then as I go, I'm going to pull it across the plate as well as moving down. So I'm going to start out here. Just a few strokes that way, flip the card over. And that gives me my edge. Then we can bring it over here to the board. I'm going to put my thumbs into the back, push it in a bit and flex the plate. And then I get these really nice curls. And that is what I'm looking for. This is a really nice smooth edge all the way along. And I am really happy with that. Beautifully smooth, absolutely gorgeous. Now, one of the problems a lot of people have is that they hold the card up too high and it's not scratching, or they hold it down too low and it's not scratching. You want to feel that point at which it catches, which should be right around here, and then hold it in there. And that's how you get your curls. So hold it here and see if it slides until ooh, it catches. And that's the angle you want to hold it at. So how do you sharpen these curve shapes? Well, you're going to do it the exact same way. Hold it 90 degrees perpendicular. And usually you're only going to be using a section of the curve. So you want this radius here. So I'm going to work on that radius. And I'm just going to hold it here. And then I'm going to pull it across with a little bit of an angle. Turn it over. Pull it over with a little bit of angle. And then we can use that little piece. So I'm just doing this small area. I'm actually getting fairly heavy wood curls. And you can see these are really fluffy curls that just have no thickness to them at all. They're, they're dainty and beautiful. Exactly what you're looking for. And if you're finishing something with a weird shape, you can always make your own. And I have a bunch of old saw plates that I keep for this matter, because an old handsaw is actually the exact steel you want for this work. It's not too hard, it's not too soft, works really well, about the right thickness, about the right spring, and so you can actually cut them apart and file them to the exact shape you want, and then you can have a card scraper that works for that one spot. If you want to see more on that, I have a video showing how I made this one. It was a while ago, but it has a lot of good information, so I'll leave a link to that down below as well. Everyone is going to have a different idea of what they think the perfect card scraper is. I like them to have a little bit of bend, so when you push into them, they have a bit of a curvature, but not bad. This one is a bit softer, and I can actually bend it quite a bit fairly easily. And this one is a good bit thicker, and so there really isn't much bend at all to that one. Some people really like that thick stick, some people like the thin. Everyone's a little different, and so you never know until you actually try what you like. Then also you see on the back of these I have several magnets that I put on there. And the reason for that is if you're scraping for a while, your thumbs will start to heat up because the steel heats up because of that little curl. So if you put a magnet in the back, it will actually save your thumb and keep the heat from burning off your thumb. I do supply a magnet with all of the card scrapers I sell because, well, I use it every time. Now this then brings me to the point of contention. This is the way that I sharpen a card scraper and it's the way that I really enjoy it. But everyone out there is going to have a completely different way of doing it. For me this is quick and easy. I, I, for me this is quick and easy. If I'm doing a rough surface I'm going to be using the file and every five or six minutes I'm going to use the file and clean it up and it's quick and ready to go. And if I want a really fine file I'll take five minutes or so and smooth everything out make it perfect and get a nice burnish on there. And then I'll burnish it four or five times before taking it back and cleaning it up again. That's just the way I do it. I really enjoy that way, but everyone has something different. So that being said, you've got to get out there and experiment and everyone's got to try something until you find what works for you. The most common problem I come across is that the burnisher is not hard enough. The steel has to be harder than the steel of your card scraper. And some of those professional card scrapers out like these ones I got on Amazon are actually a really hard steel. I had problems sharpening this with my knife steel as this was too hard for that, but the carbide rod actually does it really well. So make sure what you're using is a hard steel and you'll have much better results with them. So there you have it. This is my method for sharpening and I'd love to hear your method. I'll leave a link to a couple other videos down below about sharpening that give a slightly different method that might help you out. Um, and one I would check out particularly is Bearcat Woodworking. He makes this little jig that has a carbide rod sticking out the side so that the plate goes on there and it's held at an angle. Um, so it makes getting that angled burr a lot easier. Um, I don't use it as much, but a lot of people out there swear by this thing, and it really does work pretty well. So I hope you like this. I'd love to hear your comments down below. What works for you? What is a method that you find that works better? I'd love to hear that. Also, please like, comment, and subscribe. That really does help out the channel. 
So I think that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day. That was a tough scrape to get out of.